All right, guys, we're going to do a real basic. We're going to try and do this quick, maybe try to do it in uh, six or seven minutes. Uh, what we're looking at here is we're going to start with this guiding question is, you know, why is it important for you to be able to read a map, even though we might have a GPS device with us? Uh, the simple answer to that is, you know, technology is great. But what happens when technology fails for some reason? Uh, say, for example, you're driving in a city that you're not uh, completely, uh, you know, aware of where you're going. You've never been there before and you're using the, your GPS on your phone. Well, that's great, but what happens if your phone dies? Uh, you didn't charge the battery, or uh, you drive through a dead zone. You know, you're out in the country somewhere, and you drive through a dead zone, there's no cell tower, and you can't get any signal, so you can't get any service. Uh, so if your phone or, or what other GPS device you're using is not available to you, it doesn't hurt to have some practical map readings just to be on the safe side. Uh, if you look at the map here on this picture, we've got a globe and it's got a bunch of lines on it. Uh, essentially what we've done here is sort of demonstrate the latitude and longitude lines that uh, geographers use to measure distance. Uh, longitude runs from the North Pole to the South Pole, uh, and the latitude lines are the ones that sort of circle the Earth similar to the equator. And you measure distance uh, using latitude and longitude, not by miles, but by degrees. Uh, so, for example, if you looked at this picture, uh, starting at the equator, if you went south 15 degrees latitude, that would put you somewhere in South America. And then if you, using the same equator line, if you went north 30 degrees latitude, that would probably put you somewhere, uh, depending on what you're looking at, either somewhere dead in the middle of the Atlantic or uh, in the northern part of Florida or somewhere in the northern part of Africa, depending on what you're looking at on this map here. Uh, the e equator is zero degrees latitude. Uh, it is sort of an imaginary belt running around the Earth uh, that is halfway between the North Pole and the South Pole. Same thing with the prime meridian. It's, a, it's zero degrees longitude, and it too is sort of an imaginary line that kind of uh, runs through the United Kingdom, Spain, Western Africa, uh, down into Antarctica. And essentially what that does is it divides the world up into four hemispheres. If you use uh, the equator, you can divide the world into north and south. If you use the prime meridian, you can divide it into east and west. Uh, and so by using them together, you get four hemispheres, the northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere, eastern hemisphere, western hemisphere. And of course, uh, here in North America, we are in the uh, northern hemisphere, uh, and we are west of the prime meridian. Uh, Australia down here in the corner uh, would be in the Eastern Hemisphere and uh, Southern Hemisphere uh, because they are south of the equator and east of that prime meridian line. Uh, map tools. If you look at a map, it's got some things to help you out trying to read it. A compass, uh, if you have one, uh, it, it, you, then that is uh, set up to point to the magnetic north uh, of the world. So a compass kind of helps you know which direction you're going. Uh, on a map, you might have a compass or you might have a compass rose, uh, and that also helps you kind of figure out where on the map you're kind of going. So a compass is something that you can actually hold in your hand sometimes, but it also can be uh, on a map to help you out. Uh, if you're holding a compass, then as I said, that needle is magnetized and it points to the magnetic north pole uh, of the earth. And so uh, if you've got a compass, that will kind of tell you which direction you're going based on what direction the needle is facing. Uh, on a compass rose, you've got four major cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. Uh, and then in between are northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest. Uh, and it is amazing to me uh, how many of us get confused uh, at which direction is where. And so when I was really little, in elementary school, uh, one of my teachers told me of this little memory trick. Uh, and so I'm going to tell it to you. It's kind of funny. Uh, but if you start out up here in the north and you're trying to remember it's north, uh, you know, which north and south and then east and west, uh, trying to you know remember how to label it once you've got the compass drawn, it was never eat shredded wheat. And so uh, never for north, eat for east, shredded for, for south and uh, wheat for west. So never eat shredded wheat. Uh, that kind of gives you the four major directions. And then once you've got those, it's much easier to figure out 
where southeast and northeast and northwest and southwest fit. Uh, a map scale uh, helps you figure out distance on a map. Obviously, uh, a map has to shrink everything down to fit. Uh, and so maps are made to what they call scale. And so that means that there's a direct connection between the unit of measurement on the map and the actual distance. And so a lot of times you'll find a little scale thing that looks like the picture at the bottom. And it will say something like scale in miles or scale in kilometers. And sometimes it will say one inch equals one mile or one inch equals 100 miles. You have to really kind of look uh, to be sure uh, to find what, what the, the scale is measuring and what the distance actually is. But if you use that and measure on the map, and you, you know, in this particular case, uh, if you measured that distance on the map, it would be roughly 100 miles. So if you, had, you put two of those together, then you would know that you'd have to travel roughly 200 miles to get where you were going. Uh, the last thing is time zones. Uh, the Earth is divided into 24 time zones. Uh, there are 24 hours in a day, so a time zone is corresponding to each hour in the day. As the Earth moves and it rotates, the sun shines in different parts of the world, moving from east to west, and so that's how time changes. Uh, places that are in the same longitude will always be in the same time zone. And so if you look at the map here, you know, the eastern part of the United States, we are in the eastern time zone, that's all the same latitude. And then when it changes to the central time zone, you've changed a degree of latitude, or I'm sorry, a degree of longitude. And so the time zone changes. And as you travel uh, around the world, about every 15 degrees, you'll get a difference in longitude. And then that's when the time zone will change. All right, lastly, we've got a map legend. Uh, this is generally the thing that's going to clue you into all of the secrets of the map. Uh, somewhere on that map, there's going to be somewhere, some sort of key or legend. Sometimes it'll say map key. Uh, map key or map legend that will sort of clue you in as to what the little symbols are on the map that you might not be able to figure out. Uh, so for here uh, on this legend, you can see you've got symbols there for mile markers, for interstates, uh, for where's a county park, where's a railroad, where there's a rest stop or camping. Uh, these will help because, it, because maps have to be drawn uh, and printed and they're so small that you can't necessarily label every little thing. And so for um, expedient purposes, uh, they put little symbols on the map and then you just have to look to find where the symbol, what that symbol represents. So uh, hopefully this is nothing new. You guys have all heard this. And so this was a very, very basic review. Uh, I said I wanted to do this in six or seven minutes, and it is seven minutes and 50 seconds, so I just made it.